Hello everybody, how are you? Welcome to the latest episode of Games Up Podcast. My name is Cameron mcculloch uh, and it's just me this week. We were supposed to do an EGX thing this week, sorry if you were expecting that. Uh, we had a little bit of timetabling stuff get in the way, so we're going to do that a different way a little bit later. But the first week uh, of EGX Indie Interviews, or as we're calling them this year, Indie Views, uh, will be going live this week and we will be doing them uh, every week afterwards. This will be our month of indies, so look forward to our EGX interviews in the coming few days. But let's start this episode of Games Up Podcast as we do every week with the news. And the first piece of news this week is a doozy. Rocksteady are starting to tease their new game. The exact words from Gaz Deves, who I believe works in marketing for Rocksteady, or or he's like a the head of PR or something like that. He's He's like a public-facing figure. He's not necessarily a developer. Well, that fans were going to lose their minds suggesting some kind of fan knowledge. I think this suggests pretty heavily that we're going to see a superhero title from them. Uh, We know that it's not an Arkham game. That's been confirmed by the studio and by Warner Brothers and by Kevin Conroy. Generally, from all sides, it's been confirmed that it's not an Arkham game. There may well be an Arkham game coming from Warner Brothers Montreal, although if Rocksteady are this close to revealing it, I'm more sceptical about that now. I'd love another Arkham game, But I think it would be an odd thing for a studio to put out a follow-up to Rocksteady's trilogy after Rocksteady have already moved on. So we'll see where that goes. What we do know is is that it's probably a Warner Brothers title because Warner Brothers owns those studios. So it would be very, very odd for them to own those studios but be like, go off and make a Rayman indie game or something. They're going to use them to promote their own stuff um, and increase the popularity of their own franchises it's just a matter of which franchise is it is it something in league with justice league uh, is it something to do with the animated features they put out is it something totally different are they building a games universe who knows either way gazdi seems to think that you'll lose your mind and i seem to think that that means it's probably not too far away from batman i get the feeling the apple hasn't fallen too far from the tree this time Next piece of news is that Call of Duty Advanced Warfare was made backwards compatible this week. And the reason that this is on the news uh, is because it's interesting as it's one of the more recent Call of Duty titles uh, and it's been fairly quickly given backwards compatibility. So Call of Duty Ghosts and Modern Warfare and I I think a couple of the Black Ops and a couple of the Modern Warfares have been made backwards compatible but that was after a huge amount of fan demand, uh, especially on the Xbox side of the fan demand and some pretty big teasers and a long life for those games on the previous platform whereas Advanced Warfare hasn't been out I don't think for very long I think this will be its third year out on the market Uh, which suggests that Activision are okay with people buying this less the game is also available on Xbox One Uh, so Advanced Warfare was one of the first ones that came out cross-generationally, so it was Xbox 360 and Xbox One, which suggests that maybe Activision are okay not supporting this anymore, or not having people pick up new copies. They're happy that if you pick up an Xbox One this year, that your copy of Advanced Warfare will work just as well uh, as it would the Xbox One version, you know, of course, minus any extra features in the next-gen version, but that you'll still be able to play it. Um... This could be taken two ways. It could be taken that the uh, futuristic warfare way that they're going isn't for them anymore and they just want to show its support and be good to the consumers. I don't know that that's true. I've heard other things about what next year's Call of Duty looks like and I've heard that it's kind of back future-y, not quite as far in the future, but future-esque again. Um... I think what this points more to is that their expectations of World War II are much healthier than they thought it would be. Um, Call of Duty hasn't been on a downward slope by any means, but it's not been accelerating as hard as it did back in the modern warfare uh, era, back when Call of Duty was all people ever talked about. You know, now it's competing much more with games like Overwatch and Destiny. Uh, it's even competing with itself in that sense. Uh, and then there's many, many more online shooters, and others are ga- gaining much more of a presence. So Battlefield still has ways to go to catch up with COD, but it's got far more of a presence than it ever did. I wonder whether Activision have checked the figures from the beta that have come in recently, seen that their expectations for the game are actually far healthier than they expected and are just sort of sweetening the pie for Call of Duty customers 
by supporting them with backwards compatibility. One way or another, this is a good thing to do because it means your games have more of a shelf life. So if you own Advanced Warfare, I would suggest you play it on backwards compatibility to show that you appreciate the move, even if it's just for 20 minutes because it's a cool thing for Activision to do. Number three, bit of a bit of a weird one here, not a great one either. Uh, Nintendo's creator program has forbid YouTube content creators from streaming their games online. Bit of background into this if you need it. Nintendo's creator program uh, is a program that YouTube content creators can sign up to so that they can be allowed to show Nintendo games. Nintendo are able to s strike games on YouTube and pull the videos down or claim the money from them. Uh, and they've been pretty aggressive with that in the past. Um, there was some stuff that happened a few years ago where they aggressively chased content creators. And in response, content creators uh, got a bit angry and told Nintendo that they weren't going to support them on YouTube as much. So Nintendo came up with a creators program where you can stream those games, but Nintendo still takes a pretty big chunk of the money. In fact, I think it's over 50% after youtube ad revenue stuff so like you lose a percentage that you then take out and then nintendo takes a bit of that percentage the main chunk of that percentage so it's a lot of money um and they've now forbid consumer creators from streaming their games which is a real shame um i'm gonna say this is probably a knock-on effect of pewdiepie's major cock-up about a month ago um, Nintendo have been have shown that they don't really have a grasp on how YouTube works right now. That they that rather than than take the time to kind of understand the nuances of it and the different pockets that you get of YouTube of cre people creating totally different content, that they'd rather deal with it in one fell swoop. So it's either they strike videos or they have the content program or they forbid videos. They don't really do a one by one thing. Um, and it's, it is a shame because content creators do really, really cool inventive things or really, really cool honest things with games these days. And they are responsible for giving games not just much more of a presence, but much more of a discussion around them and, and much more cultural importance, I would argue, as a result of the discussion that comes out of them. Now, let's face it, this won't really have a knock-on to stuff like Mario Odyssey or Zelda, for example. They're still probably going to sell fine. But I think it could have a small knock-on to... ARMS, for example, or Splatoon 2, where these are really multiplayer focused games, so people playing them on streams is going to be something that will help promote the game, because you get to understand not just the gameplay of it, but the actual experience of a person playing it and losing it. Um, multiplayer streams are a big thing for pushing the uh, identity of a game, and it's a shame that Splatoon 2 and ARMS, I think, frankly, will lose a little bit of presence as a result of this move, especially in stuff like the Twitch and YouTube scene. Although, of course, it is only across YouTube, but I still think it'll have a knock-on. And number four, which leads us into our topic of the week, is that this week, Red Dead released a new trailer, and it was fucking glorious. But it made me question a couple of things that we're supposedly going to be getting in this game in less than a year's time. So with that said, here are my five conspiracy theories from the Red Dead 2 trailer. Firstly, it's not a prequel. All right, okay, let's get this straight. It's clearly a prequel. The main body of the game clearly revolves around Dutch Vanderlyn's gang and their sordid past. But I think the framing for the game may not be in the past. I wonder if this game is based around John Marston or Jack Marston retelling stories of old, uh, retelling their previous crimes or their father's previous crimes perhaps to a new gang of people uh, or to perhaps the people who settled in Blackwater at the end of uh, Red Dead 1 uh, as Jack Marston took over basically as the West came to an end and as the uh, revolution started to come in, the Industrial Revolution. The reason I say this will become a little bit more clear in the next conspiracy theory, but also because John Marston is pretty heavily hinted at in the trailer. He's never mentioned by name, but there are massive connections to the previous game, Dutch Vanderlyn, for example. And the main protagonist who has been mentioned by name in the trailer has not come up yet in any major story beats from Red Dead 1. Which suggests that if this is a prequel, it's either a prequel that we don't know everything about so far or haven't had a lot of grounding for, or it might be something that's being invented by a storyteller. That's a bit of a stretch, but it will make a little bit more sense 
with the next conspiracy theory. And that next conspiracy theory is that it used to have a different name. A couple of years ago, Red Dead 2 was leaked. It was leaked that it was in development. It was leaked that we were close to seeing it. But it wasn't leaked by the name Red Dead 2. Instead, it was leaked by the name Red Dead Revolution. This is why it ties into the previous theory. I think this game takes place at the turn of the revolution from the Old West into from the Wild West into the industrialized America, but retelling stories of the past. Something that makes me think this is because the game is still called Red Dead Redemption 2, but from what we've seen in the trailers, there doesn't seem to be any suggestion of redemption. There doesn't seem to have that John Marston looking for a new future story arc. It seems more to be based on outlaws, criminals, and general cowboy exploits. Red Dead Redemption, at this point, is more of a namesake than anything else. And if the game did have a different name previously, that means it's changed to still be Red Dead Redemption 2, a clear note to it being the second in this series of stories. So I wonder if the game was changed from Red Dead Revolution, i.e. it takes place at the Revolution, to this is the continuation of the Marston family retelling stories of old. Again, this is a bit of a stretch, but I think there's enough evidence here that you could make the case that this is some way the game could go. Something that's basically 100% confirmed at this point is that speaking of leaks, that map is totally real. If you don't know what I'm talking about, last year before Red Dead 2 was teased and confirmed, a map got leaked online. At the time, it was met with massive, massive scepticism, mainly because it looks so different to the map that we had for Red Dead 1. There's huge amounts of water, the areas are split up massively, they are far more segregated than they were in Red Dead 1. They're much more town-like rather than a big wild frontier. But a lot of the points on that map that were previously leaked have turned up in the trailer for the game, including some old locations from Red Dead 1. Basically, it seems like the map that was leaked is either basically totally correct or correct enough that whoever leaked it knew the way the game was going and had pretty strong sources in Rockstar. I haven't put the map on screen or anything like that because it's your choice to spoil it for yourself or not. But if you do want to spoil it for yourself, it's fairly easy to see and the map looks pretty great. So if it is the way the game's going, that's pretty exciting. Number four, we might be able to play as multiple characters. And for the first time in any of Rockstar games, one of them might be a female. Throughout the trailer, there are multiple scenarios where a group of characters are approaching or leaving a point of action. So for example, where they're wading through the bayou, there's three of them approaching a house. When they're leaving the exploding house, uh, which is not the bayou, they're leaving it on foot. There are three of them walking away from that exploding house in a kind of badass, not looking at the explosion kind of thing. There's multiple scenarios where there are guys lined up waiting for a train and another one approaching the train, where there are people stood outside of a house while somebody is inside of a house. It's very, very reminiscent of scenes of the trio from GTA V, i.e. Michael Trevor and Franklin. So perhaps the character switching mechanic from Grand Theft Auto V has been included in Red Dead 2, but it's expanded so that at different points of the game will play as different members of the gang. The reason I say this is because the different people seen in those scenarios in the trailers are very rarely the same people. They keep cropping up at different points in the trailers, but not necessarily approaching action points. They might be seen in a story beat, and then approaching a house, and then shooting somebody. They're not necessarily seen as playable moments, or, or moments that look like cutscenes, but more seen as characters that take place in the game that you might take control of at one point. I wonder if, for example, in the first act you play as three guys from the gang, then the second act you play as another three, and the third act another three, or you switch between who is accessible to you at any point as the game goes on. If this is the case, then it suggests that at every moment in this trailer, we're looking at a character that's playable to us. Every character that comes up in a story beat minus potentially Dutch Vanderlyn, because he's only seen for a minute, but I still think that rings true is seen in a scenario that looks as though it's playable. Now, for the most part, fans online have been able to nail down the identities of who these gang members are. In fact, six out of the seven of the gang members have basically been worked out who they are by how they looked in that silhouetted piece of artwork that we got last year, um, and how they speak and act in the trailer, and what we know about them from the stories John Marston told in Red Dead 1. 
There is one member of the gang that still stands out, and there's one person from the trailer that still doesn't fit any of those identities. And that is the female that we hear talking very briefly and then stabbing a guy in a saloon very briefly in the trailer. If this trailer is focusing on the seven members of Dutch Vanderlyn's gang and the seven and therefore the seven characters that we might get an opportunity to get our hands on, that woman may be the seventh member of the gang that is yet to have an identity, and she may become the first female playable character in a Rockstar game. An awesome step forward for Rockstar, and a really, really cool way to expand the fantastic character switching mechanic that made GTA as big as it was. Finally, and I'm pretty sure you could put money on this one, there's no way that game comes out in spring. This one's pretty easy. Rockstar are notorious for delaying their games. GTA 5 was delayed hugely. Now it was for its better, that game was absolutely stunning when it released. But for a game that's six months away, we know very, very little about Red Dead 2. Maybe these next six months are filled with trailers and information drops and the excitement boils to a peak. But I don't know that I believe it. I think we're still just a little too far out for Spring 2018 to be too believable. And yes, Spring 2018 could mean anywhere up to June, but June is E3 time, they don't really tend to release games around there. The latest I could see this game releasing, if it is Spring 2018, is April, and that's still only just more than six months away. So, I think the game is probably going to get delayed, I'm just not sure when to. And those, ladies and gentlemen, are our five conspiracy theories from the Red Dead Redemption 2 trailer. What did you think of the trailer? I loved it. I think the guy who is doing the voice acting is absolutely stunning. He's like very threatening and at the same time very likable. Uh, I really hope he's like uh, um, the kind of cowboy that you don't want to like but you can't help it. Um, I thought the tone that it set and the kind of interplay between the characters was awesome. Um, and I don't think I've been this excited to like live through a story as much as I have um, as the Dutch Vanderlyn's gang story. But that, ladies and gentlemen, brings us to the end of our story this week. So we'll leave you until next week. If you liked what you heard here, feel free to like the show because it helps us get out in front of a few more people. And we really appreciate that. And if you really liked it, feel free to subscribe to it as well. Whether it's on YouTube or iTunes, we put the show out at 6.30pm every Monday on YouTube and much earlier that day in the morning on iTunes so you can catch it on your way to work. Thanks very much. See you next week. But until then, the game's up.